Hello and welcome to your virtual tour of the Pow Wow Worcester downtown murals. As you're watching, I want you thinking about a few things and you can actually write your responses right in the chat of our Zoom meeting. I want you to write down three murals that you totally love as we walk around downtown. I also want you to write down two themes that you think could be incorporated in a mural that we're gonna paint this summer at one of the youth growth sites. And finally, I want you to come up with one question that you have about this project. Again, that's three murals you loved on the tour, two themes that you think would be perfect for a new mural at one of the youth grow gardens, and finally, one question that you have about this project. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to our virtual tour. I'm gonna use this little street view feature and we're starting off at 261 Main Street, which is also the Palladium. The first artist that I'm gonna introduce you to is named Arlen Graf and Arlen is from Brazil. He painted this bird as the sixth bird in a series of murals that he had done. We always joke in our Pow Wow Worcester committee that most of our popular murals feature birds, and Arlen was the first one to paint a bird for us during our very first festival. He loves birds because he thinks that they really channel the idea of being free and the ability to fly away and travel the world, which is something we value right now more than ever. There's actually two hearts that are hidden in this mural. One is by the neckline of the bird, and that represents his love for Brazil. And the other one is actually in the heart of the bird itself, and that represents Arlen's love for his wife, Casey. We're gonna walk right around the corner. Let's see about this. And take a look at one of the biggest murals that Pow Wow Worcester has ever been a part of. Here it is. The artist is OG Slick. Now, we actually repainted this wall in 2018, and a lot of people were shocked by that, but it was a good reminder that street art or murals uh, are totally subject to change, right? That's the idea of using a wall as your canvas. You have to understand that it's temporary. We loved this because Slick had actually painted a different smiley face in Japan during Pow Wow Japan. And our co-director at the time, Che Anderson, called him up and said, what are you doing? Worcester's the birthplace of the smiley face. We should have gotten the smiley mural. And so he said, if you find me a big enough wall, I will come and I will paint you your own smiley. And here uh, we've got one. This is actually uh, co-sponsored by the Worcester Historical Museum as well. Okay, the next spot we're gonna go is right around the corner here to see a mural painted by Tavar Zawaki. It says, I love you, marry me. Tavar had actually gone by the name Above until he painted this mural. This was the first mural that he painted under his own name. And initially the design just said, I love you, I love you. And it was all in the same color scheme of red and black with some white for juxtaposition. At the time he came to paint this mural, he was dating somebody. And when he painted, I love you, marry me, he told all of us that it was because he was making the world's largest proposal. And it actually got a lot of media coverage. People were really excited about it. He claimed to us that she did not say yes, and we thought that was so tragic. Come to find out, the real story was that they had already broken up. And when she did actually see this circulating on social media, even though he just intended it as a publicity stunt, she thought it was real, like he wanted to get back together with her. It's actually kind of a horrible story, but it's one of those situations that does have a silver lining because what we found is that tons and tons of real engagements have taken place in front of this mural, and that's the site of so many happy memories. Okay, next thing, we're going to take a look at Angelina, and her mural is across from the Hanover Theater. Whoop. Oh, that's Marka. We're going to walk all the way down the street. Here she is. Beautiful. Now, 
Angelina got interested in Worcester when she was actually at the Coachella Festival back in 2014. And she met one of our co-founders and he gave her a Worcester Wears shirt. That co-founder was Jay Anderson, but the other co-founder, Jessica Walsh, is the one who owns the store Worcester Wears. So if you have ever seen people wearing those Worcester shirts and Angelina wore the Worcester shirt and it stuck with her. So when we approached her to be a part of the festival a few years later, um, she remembered us because of that shirt here is by a Boston based artist, Marka 27. He's got a lot of works in the city now. Oh my God. It's so funny. Google blocked out their faces. I must have thought those were real humans. Okay, so Marka also has a wall in the new ramen shop, Chashu Ramen, which is around the corner from this mural. And it hasn't opened yet, but I'm sure as soon as restaurants are able to open, it will. And he's got a mural in Redemption Rock off of Shrewsbury Street as well. This is a huge, tall wall, and he wanted to use it to signify the three most important women in his life, his wife, and his two daughters. And he didn't even tell them that he was painting it. So there's this picture of him showing them and his daughter is super surprised and excited because she didn't even know that she was going to be so large and in charge on this enormous wall. The next one I'm gonna show you is one of my favorites. It's on the side of Hanover Theater and it's really unique. It was painted by a, an artist who's from Greece this one right here. His name is Insane51. Now, this is probably the mural that's gotten the most press, and it's because you can look at it in a few different ways. You can look at it like this, but also if you wear red-blue glasses, like 3D glasses, you can see just the bones or just the humans, and then this is sort of like a composite. Um, his style had included this like shaky camera photo realism along with a lot of red, blue, 3D designs. And he was able to kind of combine them here so that you can see both. He wanted it to be a really dramatic scene because it's on the side of a dramatic theater, the Hanover Theater. But he had just done another piece using the same kind of paint in Atlanta, Georgia, right before he came to Worcester. And he actually created a paint shortage for himself. This really special kind of paint um, is super limited and there wasn't a lot of it in America. And so he ran out of paint halfway through painting our mural and then had to come back in the fall to finish it up. All right. Let's take a look here at the other side of the library where we've got a mural by Wordsmith. Wordsmith is from LA and he uses his murals as an opportunity to celebrate his love of literature. He's also got a novel that he wrote, so he's an author as well. Um, he writes special little messages. Let's see if we can really zoom in. This is my palette, a mere 26 deep, yet the possibilities are infinite. And most of his murals are more like this. They don't include the whole palette, but he included every letter because he wanted people to start thinking of the letters as building blocks. Like letters can be weapons or tools. And if you mix them together, they can do powerful and sometimes dangerous things. All right, let's take a walk right up the block to the YWCA. I love this mural so much. On both sides, are two faces painted in similar styles. And this mural was completed by Askew. Askew is known as a street artist and a graffiti artist, and he's from New Zealand. He, this is one of the last murals that he painted in this style. Now he does something more similar to collage. And at this site, it was really neat because there was a worker from the Y who came out and she's asking who he was gonna paint. And then she brought her daughter and her daughter's teacher out because um, her daughter goes to school at the YWCA. And he said that he was gonna paint both of them. So he met them on a Monday and he finished this beautiful work of art by Wednesday night. It's pretty incredible. Um, she was four, her name's Ellie, when he painted her. And now this is like such a neat capsule in time. <laughs> On the other side of the YWCA, we can see a mural by the artist Sydney James. Sydney paints walls that explore how black women are the most marginalized people in society. And the YWCA was just the right fit for her because their mission is eliminating racism and empowering women. Okay, there's just one more mural that I think I'm gonna show you today on our tour. If you blink, you might miss it. Aha! 
Ah. This is the work of Greg Mike. Greg Mike's a really big deal in Atlanta. Um, he's originally from Connecticut, so he was pretty familiar with our area, but he's now really good friends with Scooter Braun. If that name sounds familiar to you, it's because Scooter Braun is the manager for Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber, and he's in this big battle with Taylor Swift right now because he just bought the rights to all of her songs. Anyways, Greg is really friendly with Scooter Braun, and he became kind of a mentor to one of our co-directors who founded the festival, Che Anderson, and he called him for advice one day about the festival, and Greg said, you know what, why don't I come up and paint a mural? And we were so lucky to have someone of his caliber come and join our festival. This is only a sampling of some of the murals that we have around Worcester and even downtown, so I suggest that you safely go take a spin. These are all within a half mile and get to see them in person because they are even more grandiose and inspiring when you're up close and personal.